yeah so uh, i studied in iit madras from uh, 1988 to 1992 uh i did my btech in uh, metallurgical uh, engineering at that time it was i think this department of metallurgy or department of metallurgical engineering i now it's expanded um and i i was a day scholar so i i have uh, other memories uh, than Correct. hostel life to share with you uh Thanks. for me i think maybe the defining thing was my cycle ride from home to school uh, to college uh, so i had a half an hour cycle ride at 7 i would start 7:30 sharp from besanagar and uh, get here for my uh, a slot or whatever it was at 8am uh, nice. and i enjoyed it and i didn't realize it uh, but over the years i had talked uh, several i don't know uh, several hundreds of uh, maybe thousands of kilometers just uh, bicycling back and forth from uh, iit madras uh, when i mean those days traffic was uh, kind of low so there were uh, maybe two places that uh, that come to mind uh, one was a tea stall uh, in front of uh, uh, where icsr is today uh, yeah. so there was a tea stall uh, just at the end of hsb uh, just where those roads meet uh, and uh, almost uh, i maybe twice a day thrice a day i would end up there uh, with uh, friends and uh, in between classes and uh, i tried my hand at various uh, co curricular activities so many times the planning used to happen there uh, we used to plan certain things there uh, which sometimes would mean we would miss the next class but uh, uh, but nevertheless that's uh, one place that i remember uh, which uh, later when uh, later it's not it's no longer there now so but uh, that's a place i remember a lot and then uh, uh, the in my final year we used to do uh, uh, late night we were working on projects so a few of us would go Uh, i'm forgetting now whether it was the velachery gate or the tarmani gate uh, uh, outside that uh, usually around 2 in the morning we would go and have a bun omelet uh, so in one of the stalls there and i was i was still i still say i mean find it amazing that there was this place open at 2 in the morning willing to serve a bun omelet uh, that uh, at that time um yes so uh, uh, i basically uh, all along i i was uh, through school and maybe through uh, college I, i always felt i was a good uh, storyteller uh, i could tell stories relate very well to an audience uh, through school so whenever we had a, a free period uh, my teacher or classmate would ask me to tell a story and i would be out in the front doing that so wow, that's a talent uh, i i i felt very comfortable standing in front of a class and saying things so Uh, i always felt good about uh, trying to be a teacher so that was something that uh, seemed a natural thing for me uh, any even later i mean uh, when we did seminars uh, in in uh, iit as a student i thought and uh, my classmates also felt that i did a good job uh, so i had uh, i was drawn to it um, and i got guidance i i really wasn't very big at career planning to be honest i went with the flow uh even getting into iit was like that i had no idea what uh, i mean in fact uh, i may be digressing a little bit from what you asked but uh, it adds no, to no, the, okay. Go uh, how i ended up where i uh, did um so uh, my father was uh, used to work in uh, indian ordnance factories uh, so defense production so we used my to my get... dad too oh <laughs> great very nice very nice so <laughs> what a we... coincidence yeah we used to get transferred all around the country every 3 to 4 years we would get transferred around so we stayed in small towns usually these defense production units are a little bit away from the city uh, they are not in the main city so our life was very different we lived with a very wide cross section of india so i mean when we talk of national integration when we talk of you know cultural acceptance uh, i never felt anything other than being an indian wherever i was uh, because i was so used to seeing so many variety of indians uh, around me uh, but one of the things about staying in small towns uh, and also i think maybe of those times uh, 70s and 80s and so on Uh, this level of knowledge of where to go professionally was not there uh, so till my 10th standard i had not heard of iit as an institute uh, in fact i had actually uh, studied for about maybe 6 uh, months at uh, the kv here uh, during one of my father's uh, you know transfers uh, i mean activities that he had to do for about 6 months at the kv even then i knew this place only because of a kv i didn't know that there was an institute here uh, so and that i would actually spend time there or any such thing i had no idea in 10th standard because my i, I joined uh, kvclri and uh, which is outside the gate 
and then uh, and and that's when we came to this big city of chennai uh, for us at least it was the big city and uh, uh, there because my classmates were uh, speaking about iit and my sister's uh, classmates uh, she's elder to me uh, her uh, uh, classmates brothers had been in iit that's when i even knew that there was some institute and that people actually prepared to get into it and that if you were, if you were interested in engineering this was some some way you try uh, and uh, so that's how i got into it i had a good set of friends in school uh, they were uh, very enthusiastic about working together and preparing and so on so somehow i meandered my way and uh, i mean i had a general maybe uh, comfort level with math and science and that uh, assisted me and general enthusiasm and i ended up here the same thing happened i think even as i left the institute i really had other than this general idea that maybe eventually i would feel comfortable being a teacher i really didn't know the path i didn't know uh, how to go about it or any such thing all my friends were applying to universities abroad and my father told me though that you know you need to get a phd and and or eventually i got to know that you need to get a phd to uh, you know uh, serve as a faculty and so on so uh, higher studies seemed as a natural thing to do everybody was applying i also applied um, and i was i think the uh, one of the other memories i have of the institute is i was uh, possibly the last or the second last person to get aid as they call it uh, they, they used to call it at that time uh, yeah. i had got admissions but nobody had given me any funding i think just a few days before uh, graduation uh, before the uh, convocation um, yeah. the there used to be one telecom center very close to where the well, in fact very close to your hostel uh, there used to be yeah, one yeah 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 i know i know yeah, yeah. so uh, one of my classmates called me and told me that there is a fax for you in that uh, telecom center and that was the only fax number we would give when we applied so correct, i went correct, there correct. i picked up that fax and that fax it said i am willing to fund you for one uh, i mean for yeah. uh, ra and so that's how i went abroad so so Very i studied abroad i studied abroad in the, in the us uh, i studied at the university of wisconsin madison uh, did my phd there uh, actually for most of my work after doing course work after doing a comprehensive exam i did most of my project work at uh, the los alamos uh, national lab in new mexico uh, so uh, and that's where i would say i grew as a person also i lived independently uh, even in uh, wisconsin i stayed with roommates but los alamos was a very small town in the middle of nowhere uh, so i had to stay by myself uh, and i really I, in my view i really grew as a person uh, personally i felt the sense of confidence the sense of freedom the sense of uh, you know i knew what i needed to do to live life uh, of course i mean you need certain basic requirements and so on but all that thing i had never even thought of till then and i suddenly realized that i was getting into all these things and i got a better sense of uh, how to handle myself uh, and so on so i did all that uh, then i worked uh, in uh, uh, in upstate new york in a company called uh, plug power uh, it's in the uh, you know fuel cell area so somewhat related to the catalysis that you speak about uh, so i worked there for about 3 years uh, by the time i had actually come uh, visited india a few times uh, and uh, Uh, spoken to my faculty here at IIT Madras, and they had told me that yes, they will. They are always looking for uh, good candidates to apply. Uh, so I stayed in touch with them uh, when I came here each time, and they had also told me at that time uh, a PhD is not sufficient. You need to have uh, two to three years uh, experience before you apply. So I sort of stayed in touch, and about maybe into the second year that I was uh, in my company there, uh, I applied for positions here, and I came. uh also this this was this part of this uh, of my journey i was very clear even though i uh, went to the us uh, i felt my journey was my own uh, different from what i saw many others uh, uh, undergo uh, so when i went to the us i was not homesick so in fact my parents would call me and ask me are you homesick and uh, or whatever <laughs> i said no i mean I, yeah. i think maybe they were disappointed or something but i was, <laughs> I was not homesick to me yeah. it was a new experience i was seeing new things and i was just uh, you know into it i really enjoyed everything there i really felt closer to i, I was there for almost 10 years so closer to the as i approached maybe the 10 year mark 8 uh, 9 years uh, i felt i was done there i kind of felt that way i had seen whatever i just had my fill i really felt i had seen everything there i felt uh, i and i had learned a lot i really appreciated what i saw there i like i said i really grew as a person there but i felt i was done uh, whatever i could uh, absorb whatever i could enrich myself in i had done i really wanted to get home and uh, and somewhere this idea that i want uh, that i would eventually come home was always with me so one of my defining images uh, from my life in the us which many of my friends also would say uh, is that my apartment was always bare absolutely bare i had one chair that's it one <laughs> chair i had one ikea chair i had purchased uh, which i liked 
uh, and that was the only chair only piece of furniture i owned uh, well one i didn't buy any desk nothing i had boxes which were my desk uh, carton boxes which were served as my desk uh, and uh, this pretty much was the only real furniture that i had and that furniture i brought with me when i came back <laughs> and uh, that was it so when i uh, told my friends i was heading back uh, some of them were not surprised they said you know you were the only guy who had just one furniture right through 10 years i mean 10 years uh, initially we had only second hand furniture but eventually when i bought a new one this was the only one new that i bought and then i got home um, so i was done so when i came here i was i didn't have any two opinions about it no second thoughts nothing uh, i was quite ready i came for uh, i think essentially one tenth the salary that i was earning in the us and no no regrets at all i was delighted to be back I was delighted to get an opportunity to be here. Uh, I joined here at IIT Madras as a faculty. Uh, very delighted to come back and join. Um, and so that was, I think, my uh, overall sort of professional personal story arriving back at uh, IIT Madras. Okay, so hobby side. Uh, one of the things I uh, uh, realized, uh, uh, I won't say I realized. I, it's, it's sort of I grew into. I guess was uh, I started traveling a lot. Again, this happened in the US. I traveled a lot. Uh, I got into photography. Uh, just my own fun. I just did it for fun. Uh, uh, I was reasonably good at it. That uh, for one of my friends, I was uh, his wedding photographer. Uh, in the ah. US, yeah, because in the US it is kind of expensive to get a, <laughs> yes, yes, a yes, photographer. Yes, yes, professional, he, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. So he married uh, uh, there, and uh, he didn't have any photographer available. So I was his wedding photographer. They even now they really love the photos uh, that I took uh, for the <laughs> nice. personal personal feel that it had, rather than uh, uh, just the you know uh, set uh, uh, you know people lined up and you take a photo kind of thing. A lot of personal moments were there. I think those photos. and similarly for another friend uh, her brother's engagement i was the photographer i mean incidentally i was i just happened to be in those regions and they were in touch with me and they asked me to do it and i did it uh, so i like that so when uh, then i also realized that coming back uh, to india i had not seen much of india actually even though we had traveled and we had uh, stayed at different places generally i think affordability was a lot less when we grew up uh, so we didn't have any significant shortage at home but uh, this luxury of traveling out staying in yeah. you know some hotel and then seeing some place and coming back was uh, never something we could that, afford that that was that was yeah, not the so time if you yeah. were in government services ah exactly <laughs> you couldn't afford it <laughs> yeah yeah so, i completely understand yeah so having come back uh, i had this both the urge to do it the experience of having done it so the confidence that i knew kind of what i needed if i went to a town or a city what i needed to yeah. set up so that people coming with yeah. me would be comfortable Uh, yeah. so then we started seeing places uh, so we traveled uh, with uh, you know my family my parents whatever we traveled a few places uh, uh, so i think that's really what i did as a hobby uh, here um, i would also say i slowly even outgrew of the hobbies because i had many other things to do yeah. now photography has a sort of uh, you know it just sits quietly my wife keeps asking why you don't take any more photos Yes, uh, I mean I do it. Uh, see, there were two things I have done. I I I would say uh, two three things. One is uh, generally being approachable. I think a lot of students would just like to stop by and talk to you about various issues they may face, or even no issue at all. They just want to stop and chat with chat. you. And I think yeah. So being available, I think, makes a big difference uh, for however long it is, even if it's for a few minutes after the class, whatever it is. uh connecting with them well in the class is uh, another thing that, because that's where they see you for the first time and that's when they decide whether or not they are comfortable talking to you or not talk, uh, or or it's best to avoid you so there so that uh, that i do um the uh, uh i stay in touch with a lot of students who have uh, you know graduated uh, keep track Mentor of where they are uh, yeah and uh, we've had uh, i i we uh, myself and fellow colleagues we used to run uh, a course uh, in the beginning which was a common course uh, called introduction to design uh, which a mm. lot of uh, students enjoyed uh, because they made things they made things uh, and we made them yeah. realize uh, that you know being a technologist is uh, more than simply knowing equations and so on and you have to make uh, compromises you have to make uh, uh, design that works with which has some requirements uh yeah. and some user so things like that and again those are things that students connect with they uh, they yeah. open up uh, i was in charge of uh, the center for innovation for some time basically as a co curricular advisor 
So worked with a lot of students on a lot of projects, encourage them to think differently, uh, mainly to think. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, the they are at a stage in life where uh, they have certain priorities specifically. So they so many times they would like to make something, but then they would they just abandon it once they are done. So I, at least I, I don't think I can change all that, but I keep making them aware that look, you, you made this, you should try and make you know take it to the next step, and rather than just abandon it. So I think making a, a connection like that uh, makes a difference uh, to make them understand that, uh, uh, in a sense, uh, they I mean this is uh, they are also family here, and uh, they shouldn't, uh, uh, and we are not expecting something from them which uh, at some level we wouldn't expect from a family member, and. Uh, so I think making them think of those uh, things makes a difference. Uh, I ask them to at least consider what, where they want to be, say, five years from now, 10 years from now. At least think yeah. about it once in a way yeah. so that they have some structure to what they're doing. Uh, yeah. I encourage them. So sometimes, uh, uh, especially if the student is not doing very well, I spend some time chatting with them. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm not sure how much of a difference uh, it has made to every one of them. Some of them uh, are happy that it happened. Um, Mainly, I even tell them, you know, even if you had some restriction in terms of what branch, what department you got, whatever it is, uh, in the institute, you have a wide variety of things you can do. So okay. you should try to do well uh, and, uh, you know, uh, be happy with at least one activity, one activity or one, it may be either a course or maybe an outside course activity, whatever it is, there must be some one or two things which when you finish, you, sit, you should say, I did really well in this. I was thrilled to do this and I was very happy to do this. I did well in this. And that gives you some satisfaction. It also gives you some direction of maybe where you want to go rather than yeah. just allow the few things that you didn't like to dominate what it is that you are. Uh, so I keep telling them that that's uh, something that uh, uh, they should think about and, uh, you know, try to incorporate in, in, them, uh, in themselves in some way.